to another video, Purple Political Talk here. Today is Wednesday, May 26, 2021, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing the state of Texas. Texas is a state that a lot of people heavily discuss about flipping and going to the Democrats. It's a state that is heavily discussed and actually, um, actually important and crucial to elections moving forward, as Texas might be the life or death for Republicans in federal elections. So considering all of that, we're going to be doing an analysis and answering one big question. When will Texas go blue? If it will go blue. So before we begin, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. So let's get started with this analysis. So answering one of the big important questions that a lot of people may have, will Texas ever go blue? And I think it's more of a matter of when it will go blue rather than a will it. I think that at this point, Texas is a state that has a lot of Democratic influence. Democrats have started to build a lot of strength in the state of Texas. And we're going to be seeing this through a lot of different trends when it pertains from um, presidential election results. And then we're also going to look at um, actually a race in 2018, the Senate race in Texas, that the Democrats performed extremely well. And we're going to see a trend building. And at the end of the day, when um, when when we look at the da data, I think we're going to be able to tell when it's going to happen just by current projections. Um, um, projections. So let's start off by discussing 2016 Texas results um, and comparing it to 2020 presidential election results. So in 2016, we see that Donald Trump statewide got 52.2% of the vote. Hillary Clinton got 43.2% of the vote. I, I want to um, make a note here that remember that this election was one of those elections where um, both candidates were so insanely unpopular that a lot of people, one, there was low turnout, two, um, you see, Gary Johnson had a 3.2% um, stake here. When you compare it, you see here that it, it doesn't even appear because it's such a minute um, in 2020. Now, I think that one of the big things that we can notice is, I mean, Hillary Clinton was, you know, roughly um, a little bit less than a million votes away from, from, from Trump. However, in 2020, we see that Biden gets extremely close, um, you know, just a couple of votes away, 550,000 votes. That's a lot of votes, but comparing that to a gap of a million, Biden closed that gap by over half, over 50%. In, um, in just four years. And the Democratic Party did that. So I think that one thing that is clear is looking at these numbers, five, and there was, again, more turnout in 2020, of course, uh, because it was such a more higher turnout election. Um, even with the increased turnout, the Democrats were able to do very well in increasing their margins, 43.2%, going up to 46.5%. And really, the, the, the Republicans don't get any, gain anything. They actually lose 0.1% comparatively to 2016. So many things happened during this period of time, and we have to take into account. One was the rise of the Trump presidency. I think that's one of the biggest things that is going to impact the future of Texas. You know, when people say um, um, the Hispanic vote in Texas is the big thing, yes, However, I think it's um, a lot bigger in certain other areas that will indicate to us when this would flip. So, for example, um, in 2016, we see how Hillary Clinton did relatively well down here um, in, in these counties down here. Higaldo County, um, a little bit larger county, Cameron County. As we move up the border, we see how Hillary Clinton did very well. Here, I mean... Biden did did somewhat well, but the margins are a lot closer. You can compare, for example, if we get a couple of these counties that compare them one to one, we see how the margins for let's take Hidalgo County, um, larger county down on the um, Texas border, sixty eight point five percent for Hillary Clinton in twenty sixteen. We look at Hidalgo County, fifty eight percent. Compare that to sixty eight percent. That's a ten point decrease. One thing that we're seeing is that during this election, we see the Democrats, generally speaking, I'm going to do a little bit of a, like a pan here just to show you guys. Democrats really did not perform as well as they hoped to down in these southern counties in Texas. The results in 2016 are very promising for the Republicans in up in these areas up here. 
However, for the Democrats, it's um, all, they performed very well down in the you know border part of the state. In 2020, we see kind of a co opposite effect. What do we see in 2020? What's one of the big things that we do see? When we see the effects of Trump, the pandemic, and all those things, it's just general political things that happen, general political shifts in the nation. I mean, the Democrats were running with so much momentum in 2020. And even that, I mean, this shift is not as much as it could be. And I'm going to show you why after. Um, I would say with Texas, one of the big things we did see for Democrats is they increased their presence in the suburbs immensely. Take um, Tarrant County. This is one of the largest counties in Texas. Donald Trump won this county by nearly 10 points. Go back. Biden actually won this county narrowly, but he got 10% of the vote in one of Texas's big counties. And if we go through all the big counties, we're going to be able to see the same effect. 60.8%. 65.1%. We're seeing Biden was running up the margins. San Antonio County um, in Bexar County, 58.2% for for um, Biden, 54. So here we see that um, Biden goes down a little bit. But one of the big areas I want to focus on are these areas. We have the Austin and its suburbs and Houston and its suburbs. These are what is going to be a deciding factor for Texas and for the Democrats in Texas. So I think that ultimately... The, the, the fact that a lot of political analysts say that, oh, the Hispanics down in this area of the, of the state are going to be the most crucial part for, um, for Biden or actually any Democrat to flip Texas. That is not true. Um, I think that these suburban counties, if the Democrats are able to continue to raise up those margins, start getting more in these outskirt counties in the suburbs, if they're able to push up the margins in those counties, Democrats might be on their way to uh, actually win in the state of Texas. I wanna show you an example of that. We see a pretty similar map to this. I mean, let's look at the 2020 Senate elections. Again, this was a lot more closer of an election. Um, and interestingly enough, it had a similar turnout to 20, um, 2016, even though it was a Senate race. This Senate race is famous for Texas politics between Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke. Um, we see that again, Beto O'Rourke runs up those marches down here. He performs very well. And we've compared them to Trump in 2020 compared to Biden after, you know, some of Trump's effects in power um, impact. Um, we can see that, you know, Beto O'Rourke does run down the margins right here. But what's more important, and remember, it, realistically, the NRM goes from this. This timeline goes from this result to this result to finally the 2020 results. We can see that one of the biggest changes, let's look at, at some of the suburbs, 51% for the Republicans, um, and then a significant amount of um, third party vote here. And then here we have, again, another significant amount. For example, Hayes County was a lot closer. But compare that to now, where Democrats not only close up the marches in these counties, they also did here, and they're winning in these counties, but they're bringing up their margins, they're running up the marches. Remember, politics is always a game of margins. You can afford to lose certain precincts. You can afford to lose certain counties. However, as long as you replace them, if you do not replace them, then you're not gonna you're gonna have losses in the state, and you're gonna have a net down. This is what the Republicans are going through, and you know ultimately, I think that if they run the right candidates, for example, Beto O'Rourke is a great candidate for Texas. Someone like a Beto O'Rourke that can bring up that excitement in these counties in the suburbs. And the Democrats can create a message that is appealing enough. Texas might be flipped and might go blue before we know it. I think that truly, truly and realistically speaking, Texas could be going blue. Um, I would say by the by the least 2028, um, whether it be a Senate race, a whatever race. I think that's something that we might be might be looking at in 2028, um, if I'm correct. Um, we could see some presidential victories there. Um, in 2024, it's a possibility. Now, as far as the short term goes, Texas will not be going blue. Let's look at these results, and we, if we can take a look at statewide races, we see the same effect. The Republicans still have around the six to seven point lead over Democrats statewide in Texas. It's a lot. However, it's actually not as much as you may think. I mean, a six-point victory is great, but six-point when you had a 15-point victory before, when this was a safe state, that's no good anymore. And 
I think that ultimately that's one of the biggest challenges is going to face the Republicans. Um, as far as um, we see the, the political shifts, it's mostly in the suburbs. And I think that's a fact that a lot of people fail uh, neglect and fail to, to analyze is a lot of the growth for Democrats is in the suburbs because truly they've lost support in rural areas. And we see all of this is rural areas. You know, some counties milder than others. I mean, 800 people in some counties, something like this. King County, for example, has just... 159 votes you see so i think that something like this we can tell that but in these counties are even if they gain a little bit or gain a lot ultimately speaking the democrats have no 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 support in these areas because they're rural and they've lost rural support however if they're able to run up the margins in areas like el paso like dallas like fort worth like houston like austin like san antonio Democrats are ultimately going to probably be able to go on and flip the state of Texas. Um, and I think, again, this is a great example of um, the Senate race is a great example of if the Democrats can write the right candidate. Maybe not on a nationwide race because you're going to need to write, you know, someone who's diversified and can reach a lot of different areas. But, you know, a statewide race, if they can run a candidate that could completely wipe the map in the suburbs, completely wipe the map in um, in the south of the state, you realistically might see a blue Texas as soon as 2024. Um, I think that the Democrats have a very big challenge ahead of them. But, you know, it's not impossible. We saw how Georgia went from a similar margin um Especially in its um, in its Senate races, it went from around a six point margin of victory for Donald Trump. In um, if I'm correct, it might have been six or three. I do not remember correctly, but um, it was something around there. Um, and we see how Donald Trump lost that victory. The Republicans lost because the Democrats were able to run the right candidates. They were able to impulse with um, big support and high turnout. This is something else that's crucial. There are a lot of communities in these cities. And, you know, Texas is one of those states that has a ton of large cities. So I think that, and, and again, this is, we're going to talk also about the um, the political impact of this later. But I want to say that truly Texas has a, a very big benefit for the Democrats is that they could, they could organize and they already have some, um, like some influence over the state. They have 11 house seats, you know, and little by little they're gaining more. So at the end of the day, it's more of a when and a how successfully Democrats are able to execute the, the flip. Now, as far as the political repercussions go, Republicans cannot afford at any cost to lose Texas. The moment Republicans lose Texas, forget about winning nation, national elections for a good, I would say, 30 years until they're able to get it back because... If they win here and they continue to win continually, let's say it has a Florida effect where Republicans have been winning Florida um, in statewide races and have gotten close to ever since 2012 where Mitt Romney got inches close to winning Florida. But more realistically, realistically um, we see Florida getting super, like, coming red 2016 forward where we saw a huge trifecta. And in 2020, we saw Florida look very good for um, Republicans. We might see the same impact for, for the Democrats in Texas. And if that happens, Republicans cannot win elections. I mean, at this point also, we must consider that Texas is becoming a super large electoral power in the sense that they have 40, 40 electoral votes. 40. That is an insane amount of electoral votes. Because, you know, I think that um, as we see a lot of these states come down, it's going to be a lot more powerful to just win in Texas. For the Democrats, they really realistically could win Texas, a couple states in the Midwest, and California, New York. They might have the election in just a couple of states. That is what is dangerous for the Democrats. They really cannot afford it uh, for the Republicans, um, and they really cannot afford it. The Democrats, if they're able to pull Texas off, you can assure they might, they're in the White House for at least 12 to 15 years, if not more. So... Texas definitely plays a huge role as far as presidential politics go. And for the Senate and House, you know, in a, in a very close Congress like this one, if that happens again and occurs again in the future, 
Who knows? Frankly, that might just be what ends up happening and we might see a close race again. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis and hope you guys understood a little bit more about Texas politics and understand when it might flip. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to have some very cool talk content out in the next couple of days. Um, so please remember to like, subscribe, and stay, um, put on no post notifications to make sure you guys are updated every time I post a video and are up to date right away when I post. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.